Good, good morning, everyone, and, uh, and, and thank you, Declan. Um, I, I am um, a completely newly minted uh, Director General of the CBI, and I have to say, and I'm two weeks into the job, and I'm absolutely delighted that one of my first public engagements is here with you to celebrate the UK's mid-sized and growing businesses. And I want to welcome you most warmly to today's events and thank Lloyds Bank for supporting the CBI's second MSB Summit. Lloyds have been tireless in backing the, US, the UK's mid-sized businesses, and you'll hear directly from their CEO in just a moment. I'd also like to thank Experian, who have been super partners in the analysis and interviews underpinning our new report. I've been lucky enough to work with a number of great MSBs over the years, and most recently with an outstanding manufacturer called the Vitec Group. Vitec is a British MSB and is the world's biggest manufacturer of camera supports, exports 75% of what it makes, and is a true global <coughs> success story. It's been an exciting and rewarding journey to be part of, but I have to say, I've seen how tough life can be too. Smaller firms have more agility, but they can have less resistance. Exchange rate movements can hit very hard indeed, and growth brings strains new governance, new systems, and new financing challenges. And all of these call for careful thinking and can be helped or hindered by public policy choices. And as we know, countries like Germany have understood the importance of mid-sized businesses for years, and they, they even have a great word for them, the Mittelstand. And I'm afraid it doesn't really translate very well into English, so forgive me if I use the rather less inspiring term MSBs. If anyone can think of anything better, uh, or message it on a postcard. Um, but even if the description doesn't inspire, the performance really does. So while the UK's MSBs make up only 2% of firms, they're responsible for one in six jobs, and they generate nearly a quarter of private sector revenue. That's quite a feat. And the CBI, under my predecessor, John Cridland, was one of the first organizations to talk about this and put MSBs on the map. And over 250 MSBs have joined the CBI in the last five years. We've been doing three main things. First, we've been helping to build export confidence, working with UKTI to offer MSB-only trade missions, most recently to Brazil, Russia, and Turkey. Second, we're helping to expand capabilities, creating CBI M clubs, where growing businesses can swap experience and ideas, and we'll be holding our 100th M Club this year. And thirdly, we're helping MSBs access capital more easily by successfully persuading government to increase the supply of long-term capital. These will remain big priorities for us for the future. But today is about the next chapter, and on this I want to share with you the findings from our recent research. Today we're publishing a new report into MSBs called Life in the Fast Lane, in partnership with Lloyds Banking Group and Experian. And the focus of our new report is on scale-ups. A scale-up is an, a high-flying MSB whose revenues have grown by 20% or more in each year of the last three years, so for three years in a row. And the team interviewed 50 scale-up leaders face-to-face -face and analyzed data from thousands of MSBs across the country. And let me highlight two key findings. First, the report shows that in the three years from 2010, 11% of MSBs were scale-ups, and that they were the difference between recession and recovery. Without the £59 billion generated by these fast-growth firms, the UK would have been in recession. Instead of growing by 2.7%, the economy would have shrunk by 1.3%. That's quite some difference, and all this from only 3,000 firms. So what's clear is that fast-growing, medium-sized bus businesses are the unsung heroes of our economy, and it's important that we tell this story loudly and clearly, an extraordinary contribution to growth, prosperity, and living standards. The second finding is that when it comes to scaling up, there are no rules about who's included. <coughs> Scale-ups include firms of all ages, all sectors, and all regions. From the media, you can sometimes be tempted to think that all this growth is coming from high tech, that London is the only epicenter, and that only young businesses can grow. It's just not true. We found that seven in 10 scale-ups are located outside London, 
from tech companies in Cambridge to manufacturers in the Midlands and the gaming industry in Dundee. Our report also covers businesses from a whole range of sectors, from infection control product, product company Quadraline to home exchange firm Love Home Swap and Southampton Football, Football Club, the world's fastest growing football brand. And we've also found that you are never too old for ambition. The report includes Airbnb, founded in San Francisco in 2008, and Western Cider, founded in the Hereford countryside in 1880. Two firms of very different ages, with very different scale-up journeys, but united by much of the same thinking. So, Britain's scale-ups come from many walks of life, and they've made a huge contribution to our economic recovery. And looking forward, they will be just as crucial to our future economic prosperity. Just look at the numbers. Our report found that 11% of medium-sized businesses were fast-growing scale-ups from 2010 to, to 2013. But in the previous three years, the hit rate was higher at 15%. And if the most recent rate had matched that earlier rate, the addition to GDP would have been £27 billion more, a staggering uplift. And this just illustrates the potential if our scale-up rate could rise to 15% or why not even higher. Of course, this will, this will be no simple task and our report sets out some themes that draw on the lessons from successful MSBs. For example, Tony Austin, CEO and co-founder of data firm Bohurst, noted how his company attracted potential employees not by competing on salary, but by selling their company culture and the chance to be part of an exciting journey. And Testplant advises firms to think global from day one. They set out to create an international software business with the US as a key market, and today exports make up 85% of their sales. But while scaling up is all about innovation and leadership, creating the right policy environment will be crucial. And the CBI, under my leadership, will be campaigning for policies that make it easier for businesses in all sectors and all regions to grow and flourish. And many of our themes are reflected in comments made to us by the scale-up leaders in our report. First, skills and access to talent. Our companies are facing a serious skill shortage across many sectors. Computer science, engineering, design, advanced manufacturing, and we do need to take urgent action to solve the problem. We applaud the government's ambition to create three million new apprentices by, the, by 2020, but its new apprenticeship levy, announced last week, will affect many PSBs and effectively is a new payroll tax. And at a cost of three billion pounds, it's a big number, and so it needs to deliver big results. It must prioritize quality over quantity, it must not get swamped by bureaucracy, and it must be led by business to get the best outcomes. At the same time, we'll be calling for the tier two visa cap to be lifted to enable you to bring in the best talent from around the world. We will also be putting a big focus on world-class infrastructure, road, rail, aviation, broadcast. The UK stands 24th in the world for the quality of its infrastructure, even though we have the fifth largest economy. And for mid-sized mid businesses, fast and reliable broadband speeds, good transport links, and other great infrastructure really matter. And we welcome the government's commitment to £120 billion of spending on infrastructure over the next five years, but it does need to get on and build. Third, business needs globally competitive tax and regulation, and we'll be campa campaigning for business rates reform and also for the creation of long-term lending trusts, giving tax incentives for individuals offering long-term loans to business. Innovation spending, the UK is bottom of G7 spending on R&D and we're calling for the government to increase its commitment and welcome recent moves in science, aerospace and automotive. And finally on exports, government needs to join up across departments to support smaller businesses in expanding into new markets. This is not just about action on the national stage, it's increasingly about engaging locally, regionally and with our devolved nations. The UK is changing and the CBI is changing with it. We'll be using our networks across the UK 
to bring a strong voice of business to devolution debates across the country. Our scale-ups outside London can hold the key to future prosperity across the country and their voice needs to and will be heard. So to bring my thoughts here today to a close, mid-sized businesses really matter. And today's report is an invitation to MSBs of all ages, all regions and all sectors to do even more. In the past, scale-ups helped pull us into recovery and in the future, they can help pro propel us into prosperity. To do this, we'll need to grow the ranks of Britain's fast-growing scale-ups. We'll need to learn from the successes and mistakes of those who are already there. And we'll need to push for the right policy priorities at national and regional levels on skills, on exports, tax, innovation and infrastructure. And we'll need to get firing on all cylinders, creating specialised hubs of private sector excellence across the whole country. And as Director General of the CBI, I look forward to working with all of you to make this happen. Thank you very much. Thank you.